compelling, credible, comprehensive. Hello again, welcome. This is State of Affairs. We have just four days to the elections. And everyone is talking about the elections. There are people who say they are voting because they want to see change. Others say they want continuity. The choices will be made on December 7th, which is just four days away. Remember to step out and vote because your vote counts. And also vote peacefully. Leave the polling center. Maybe go back when counting starts. Well, tonight, I'm talking to a business mogul, a patriotic African. He likes to say he's a patriotic Ghanaian, but I think he's a patriotic African, Dr. Kofi Amwa. He's my guest tonight. Thank you for joining us. Finally, I get to interview you. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I've known you all this while. I've never interviewed you. I uh, know, and I, <laughs> I always watch you, and I find you amazing. You ask intelligent questions. Thank you. It's good, it's <laughs> Thank good to you. be here. Yes, it's, it's good to have you in our studio. Um, so, you've been following the campaign trails of mm. both the NDC and the MPP. They are mm. the two biggest parties. Of course, mm. you have Dr. Parkwesi Indum mm. bringing in some energy as well. The CPP trying to do something very different from what we've seen them do in previous elections. And then there's the PNC, mm -hmm. uh, which has always been there. And then there's an independent candidate. Now, a lot of discussion that have gone on on social media particularly, it's about job creation. Mm -hmm. President Mahama says he will create 3 million jobs if he's retained. Mm -hmm. Nane Kufwadu's uh, 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 manifesto is all about jobs. He says mm -hmm. an agenda for job creation. So mm -hmm. it tells you what he wants to do Correct. if he's given the mandate for four years. For you, as a businessman who mm -hmm. employs people, mm -hmm. tell us what the last three and a half years has been for you, a business climate for businessmen like you. Well, um Good evening to your listeners. Thank you for inviting me. I think this election is an epoch election. I think we are at a crossroads and we need to figure out what are the issues for the voters to decide upon so that eventually Ghana can start traveling on the right road to success. Mm -hmm. But for me as a business person, I think the challenges have been multifaceted. We all know about the cost of energy has quadrupled, um, the, not just the cost, but even the uh, stability of supply. Um, so if you're in manufacturing, it becomes very difficult. Uh, the cost of credit, we have talked many times about this. Credit is the engine for business to expand, to grow, and therefore to okay. employ more people. Um, inflation and then the stability of our currency, the city is under stress. It's not just category of these issues, but I think we need to understand what are the underlying forces that has created this. Mm -hmm. And I've been giving a lot of lectures lately, and I'm worried about the direction that our country is traveling. Because, as you remember, right after the Second World War, there were a lot of countries that were down there with us. Uh, they were all colonial, ex-colonial countries. Malaysia, Singapore, mm -hmm. Korea, Taiwan, Japan, all these countries have figured a way to get out from their bootstraps mm -hmm. and create large economies. Why are we still going around borrowing huge amounts of money we can pay, begging other nations to help us, going back to the IMF or World Bank? What is that? Have we been able to really understand the process of economic development, the process of social development, and how to energize your domestic economy to create the opportunities for your people. So I think those are the issues as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Now, you, you, you mentioned the likes of um, Korea, Singapore, mm -hmm. and Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And these are examples that come up all the time when uh, there's a comparison to make uh, mm -hmm. between Ghana and the Asian Tigers, as mm -hmm. uh, we call them. Um, again, I want to refer to your business acumen. Mm -hmm. What do you think, apart from the aforementioned problems you, you listed, like the, the, the loans and mm -hmm. the inflation, what exactly do you think? Is it down to leadership, as for instance, uh, uh, Dr. Kofi Annan uh, claimed a few uh, months ago that Africa's problem oh. is just leadership and not the lack of resources? Would you say it boils down to leadership, basically? Well, I think leadership is a part of it. It's not the only thing. I mm -hmm. think... Right after independence, uh, as, as a community, as a people, 
uh, we had to understand the direction that we, we had to go based on the history of our situation. Mm -hmm. um, it is very easy to say we are the people who elect the leaders. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, if we are then electing the wrong leaders, then we must also become a part of the blame. Uh, but I think uh, we've been looking for manna from heaven, mm -hmm. you know, and it's the, the rich uncle syndrome. When we have a problem, we want, we want to take it to a rich uncle, and, and we've taken that to the national level. Uh, we, we, we think that by, by going to some developed countries uh, for assistance, through that we can develop. Uh, we think that by going to flu the euro bond mm -hmm. and borrow a billion dollars and, and come and spend it to build roads and hospitals, basically for consumption. And when the time comes to pay, we have to go and borrow another one. So I think leadership is a portion of that. But let me have this discussion with you, because I think it's important. If you go back and look at what strategies did the United States use, the United Kingdom, Germany, those were the first group of countries that developed. We put them aside. Then you take the second wave of countries, Japan, Korea, China. What did they do? Then you come to the classmates of Ghana, Malaysia, Singapore, what did they do? You will see that there's a specific road to success, as I call it, that each of these countries from different parts of, of the globe, different rich stock in different time periods have used the same road to get to where they are today. And we think that we can do it differently. And I think that if we are not careful and we don't look at the economic history of nations that have developed, we will keep going around in circles. Every nation starts with their God-given resources, your people and your land. And with that, you create a viable, viral, domestic economy mm. through agriculture. You know, when we say domestic economy, you, you have to produce goods and services to satisfy your people. And it is the same people that are going to consume that should be also the producers. And therefore, if you have a policy that puts the people aside, let's go and borrow and come and do a road for them because they need a road. Let's go and borrow and give them a hospital because they need a hospital. Let's go and borrow and give them a KPIV. Let's go and borrow and do this. The people are poor. Let's give them these things. But, but the government, you, for instance, says that these things create jobs as well. The construction of the roads, the construction of the hospitals are creating jobs. When they are ready, you employ nurses, more doctors. So it's a, it's a, it's a source of employment, isn't it? Well, it is a source of employment, but it is sustainable. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. During the Kufu administration, we hosted the Africa Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. This required that we build two brand new stadia and refurbish the other two, Kumasi, Accra, Tamale, Esipon. Mm -hmm. When you go there today, Esipon, you will cry, you will weep. When you go to the Tamale one, you will weep. It is completely degraded, you know? So when you are doing something of, of, of uh, uh, temporal benefit to satisfy the people, now we have shining edifices. Mm -hmm. We have interchanges. We have new airports. We have another new, new stadium in Cape Coast. All these things are shining. So Ghanaians are saying somebody has done well. He's created all these things. I don't wish it, but I bet if we don't change course, in five years' time, all this edifice will be badly maintained. The hospitals you're talking about, you're creating nurses and all of that. You go to some of these, so we have hematology department. You look behind the window, there's nothing there. So the basic, my basic position is that we Ghanaians need to understand that we need the culture of work. Government policy must incentivize us to work. And as we do that, we create a strong economy, create a wealth, and with that, we can create all the infrastructure that we need. Of course, I'm a businessman. Mm. I borrow money. I use it wisely. I pay the loan back. I pay the interest. And I keep the, the rest. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with borrowing. But if you borrow to consume, and you're sitting at home feeling good, turning on your air condition and all of that, where is the resource, the money going to come from to pay for it? That is my point. So you think one of the biggest mistakes we are making is borrowing and using it on consumption pro pro projects, basically? That, 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 and that, is, that is the fallacy of our situation. And, and, and the, the, the rich uncle syndrome I told you, mm. uh, I mean, 
everybody is saying that the NDC has done well. Of course, eventually we need all this infrastructure. But I'm using the, the stadium example to tell you that if you don't have the backbone, the capacity eh, mm -hmm. to use it properly to benefit you, then at some point it's going to degenerate. So what should we be spending that uh, money on? The monies we are borrowing, what should we instead be spending it on? Well, I have proposed a development plan to the nation. And, and that development plan also takes into what Nana Kufuaru is talking about, what is one factory, one district policy. Mm -hmm. And my three-legged approach is very simple. Agriculture, manufacturing, and finance. Now, the agriculture is very important because if you look at it, majority of our people live in the hinterland. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, we have the vast 91,000 square miles of land that Ghana sits on. Most of it is idle. And we turn around to import vegetables. We are importing fruit juice. We are importing canned tomatoes. When you say this, people think that it's a cliche. But it spells to me the fallacy of our situation. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We are importing things that we should be able to grow on our own land by our own people. In which case, the multiply effect of this activity will create a, a, a vara economy mm -hmm. to take us forward. But if we keep borrowing, and you don't have the strength of the economy with which the borrow funds can generate more money with which to pay for, and you consume it, you are going to be in a standstill. And that is where Ghana is. We will keep going back to the World Bank. During the Kufour time, we win ourselves out of the IMF. In the 80s, the structural adjustment program, PAMS card, this card, that, we went through all that. None of these countries I'm talking about went to the World Bank. So we've come to a point where we must have confidence in ourselves. We must identify that we have God-given resources of a huge fertile land that we can use. You have this useful population moving from the villages to the, to the city centers, looking for unavailable jobs. They are an asset. Don't you feel sad when you drive past them in the heat of the sun? You look at their faces with no hope. That is not leadership. And this is where I think this election is about changing course to say that Ghanaians must be respected, Ghanaians may become a part of their own transformation. It's not about somebody saying that, oh, vote for me, I'll come and do this for you. You have all these chiefs sitting there in their kente and all that, oh, Mr. President, we need this, we need that. That is not going to get away. We might become bold and start talking about these things. It is about getting our people to work. So many years have gone by that Ghanaians are beginning to be lazy. The culture of work is disappearing. You understand what I'm saying? You've been abroad. You've seen how hard people work. Some people have two, three jobs. You come here, we are walking around and all of that. It's not that the people themselves don't want to work, but the challenge and the incentive have not been there. Ghanaian companies are supposed to be the engine of growth. How can they be the engine of growth when they are taxed out of existence? When all the inputs they need to make things work are skyrocketed in terms of their cost. So we are, we are just verbalizing things without meaning what we are saying. And this is where we are in the danger. Do you think basically the average voter understands or appreciates the enormity, the importance of this election to them? Well, this is why I came to your studio to try <laughs> to have this discussion. Because okay. I think some of them do understand. But I think we have to look in their face and tell them that, my friend, don't sell your vote. You sell your vote, you're selling your future. Listen to the prescription of the various candidates, the parties, what they say they are going to do. Now, if you, you, you this, this, these presidential candidates represent a political party. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for us, the two big ones, they've all had a chance to rule Ghana. So we can go by their, their, their record. During the Kufu administration under the MPP, we made tremendous strides. Eh? Death forgive it. We went we hippic. When we, when we came, we were hippic. They can, if we are not careful, we'll get back to hippic again. We borrow money and borrow money and we couldn't pay. And it became an albatross around our neck. Our little cocoa revenue had to go and pay on the interest on the loans. So we, there's nothing we could do. Fortunately, the debt was forgiven. We put our house in order. We win ourselves out of IMF. We got lucky. We found oil. So things were going smoothly. I think 2014, our GDP growth was 14%, the highest in the world at that time because of the oil fine. Now, we started going to the Eurobond. We started going to China. 
we are up to death in our neck. They go and borrow one billion. When the time is coming to go and pay, we don't have the money, so we have to go and borrow another one billion. It's become a Ponzi scheme. We must call a spade a spade. And if the NDC is telling us that they want to continue in the same direction, I think Ghanaians must reject that. The, that will not get us out of the mess we are in. And President Mahama is a good friend of mine, a gentleman. I like him. I think he's doing his best. But the best is not good enough. The policy set is wrong. Set Tepe has been wrong for the country. We need a finance and economic development minister who understands the creation of jobs. Who understands you think the Tepe doesn't understand? He, well, I can only go by mm. what he has done. Mm. All he has done is go and borrow. And the people are unemployed. The youth unemployment is about 40%. 40% of your young people are unemployed. Majority, a great majority of graduates from the universities sit at home for three years, the average, before they get a job. What kind of country is that? You invest heavily in your young people to go through SSS, go to the university, and when they come out, there's no job for them to do. It is very pathetic. It's sad. I'm saddened. And I think that voters stop the tribal voting. Mm. We are all Ghanaians. We love each other. We must love each other. The important thing is to have an economy that gives you hope, that makes sure that you get a job, that will pay you good wages and good salaries, so you can take care of yourself and your family and your children. If we keep dividing ourselves and keeping our voice going this way, Ghana will be going around in circles. All right. We'll come back shortly with Dr. Kofi Amwa. Uh, we'll be talking, he mentioned tribal politics. We'll be talking a bit about tribal politics. And also, our voting trends. Uh, you've heard a lot of politicians on the campaign platform. Some saying that, um, well, vote for him or her because she's good looking. That one is good, better looking. All of those and the other trivialities. We'll be right back. Do stay with us. looks like London. Wow. Since 1985, Star Assurance, your solid partner. If I don't see this wedding with my own eyeballs, dear, it's not me. That's right. I'm just going to the church. Okay, let me connect my earpiece. Now you may. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who is this on who stop me by their sharing here? For Sana. Buffet, pop, pop, pop. Enjoy even more Facebook sessions with MTN Free After One. Now, talk for one minute on MTN Free After One and enjoy free Facebook for the rest of the day. And you still only pay for the first minute. The rest is free. Umpewea, Wopedye. Dial star 315 hash to sign up now. MTN, everywhere you go. Our country has experienced eight years of suffering and hardship under the NDC and John Mahama. Dubious judgment debts, economy in crisis, high tax rates, and over three and a half years in darkness. Under Mohammed's corrupt and incompetent government, local businesses are being killed. Trillions are being squandered. Ghanaians are losing jobs, homes, and hope. In Ekufuado's Ghana, it's an agenda for jobs, creating prosperity and equal opportunity for all. A decisive, competent, 
an incorruptible team. Change that will put Ghana back to work. Change is coming. Don't be afraid to speak up this election season. Dial 3000 on MTN and Vodafone now to inform us on all election-related issues wherever you are. Speak up and stand up for peace. This initiative is brought to you by EIB Network and Kivusa. Welcome back to State of Affairs. I'm here with business mogul and patriotic African, Dr. Kofi Amwa. And uh, thanks once again for joining us here tonight. And I see a lot of you are sending in questions for Dr. Kofi Amwa on my timeline. If time allows us, I'll put, uh, pose those questions to him. Hopefully, he'll be able to answer them um, very soon. But in the meantime, I've also got questions for him. So we'll go with mine first. Now, uh, you brought up the issue of tribal politics. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing we talk about every election year in year. Mm -hmm. I mean, after the elections, we forget about it. But mm -hmm. every time we go into that particular year, after mm -hmm. four years, it crops up. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we cannot get over this menace, this animal, tribal politics? I think Ghana has not become the amalgam of a society that sees itself moving forward together. Uh, there are historical precedents, mm -hmm. but I also think that the leadership has the responsibility to bring us together. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, when uh, a potential president, a political leader, is telling the people to vote for him because he's one of them, right then and then, you are, you, are, you are creating walls of division. That kind of language should never come from the mouth of a presidential candidate. It started with Professor Mills, and now it's being continued. I think that Ghana is, is, must become a united country. Our diversity in ethnicity must be a strength, not a weakness. The different cultural expositions during the festivals, I think, are items of beauty, yeah. you know. And, and, and we do have different resources in different parts of the world, I mean different parts of the country, and we must celebrate that. Mm. So I think if you're going to vote for somebody because he is a member of your tribe, uh, but may not be the right person to come up with the policies that will help your individual life, you are making a mistake. We need to get away from that. Okay. And then another thing I wanted to talk to you about. I'm still going to go back to job creation. Mm -hmm. And also the graduates who churn out from our universities mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. um, Businessmen and women like you have talked about the curriculum in the schools. Mm -hmm. That it is also a problem. We do not uh, teach our students to think outside the box as far mm -hmm. as they are concerned. Mm -hmm. Is this something you agree uh, with? That uh, oh, yeah, I think, I think that um, I go back to what the two political parties have always said, that the private sector must be the engine of growth. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what are the skill sets that the private se sector needs? Mm -hmm. Is it engineers? Uh, do they need biochemists? Do they need um, physicists? Uh, or do they need people who have studied psychology, politics, and the like? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... We have also talked about a national development plan. The Constitution uh, calls for every president to present a national development plan to the people. And that national development plan by the Constitution must include agriculture and industry. Now, if we were to focus, as I said, all these countries that were down there with us and moved on, focus on agriculture and industry to become rich. If we were also to do that, then it will tail back into the curricula that we have in our universities to, to create agronomists, you understand what I'm saying, uh, to have people who understand the storage of, say, tomatoes mm -hmm. so they don't go rot rotten. So the skill set we need must be a part of a national development agenda. If we were to say the next seven years, 
Ghana is going to be heavy in maximization of agricultural produce. Then it calls for the curricula to tail in into that. But if we keep saying that the private sector is the engine of growth, but it's disassociated, its needs are disassociated with that, what our universities are teaching. Then I think we're going so you think it's direction. become a cliche, this private sector? Yeah, because if, if the president of the country is saying that we are not producing the right kind of people, I have a problem with that. It's the president of the nation. So a change must happen immediately. You know, the chancellors of the universities must be called upon. Some meetings must be had. And a proper direction must be given to them. But we don't describe problems and leave them at the doorstep. This thing has been talked about, and these graduates coming out of the universities who, after their national service, don't get any jobs, they didn't start yesterday. It's been going on and on and on. So where, where, where are we now talking about it? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we must be driven by purpose, by objectives, by a plan that says we are going to travel, travel this road. And based on that journey, these are the things that we need to do. Okay. Now, another thing I want to talk to you about is factories. Mm -hmm. uh, Nana Ekufuado promising one uh, district, one factory. Mm -hmm. And then you also have the president talking about how some factories have been revamped. For instance, the Komenda Sugar Factory. Mm -hmm. Then there is the Kumase Shoe Factory. And then the Pralugu Tomato Factory. Now the Northern Star uh, Tomato Factory. Mm -hmm. um, if you compare what the NDC government has been able to do mm -hmm. for these factories, and uh, to be fair, the Kumase Shoe Factory has done pretty much a good job mm -hmm. uh, since it was revamped. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there is all the <laughs> discussion about the Commander Sugar Factory and whether mm -hmm. it was opened at the right time mm -hmm. and what should have been done first to grow the sugar cane first before mm -hmm. opening it. We saw all the pomp and pageantry there mm -hmm. in the opening. And there are some who also doubt this one district, one factory, that mm -hmm. we do not probably have the capacity to implement a one district, mm -hmm. one factory. In fact, President Muhammad described it as a political talk. It's just to win votes. Well, I don't think it's just win votes. Uh, I think that, as I said, if we want to develop, we need to understand the resources we have and how to use these resources to develop. We have 91,000 square miles of arable land that are not being used. I'll give you an example. The Cocoa Project. When Tete Kwashi brought the Cocoa Port to Ghana, we had not seen this crop before. But with an intelligent government policy, small farmers became businesses in their own right, supported by government subsidy, hybrid seeds, extension offices, purchasing outlets. When you finish, take your produce here, it will be bought and you will be paid on the spot. Mm. Ghana rose to become the world's largest producer of this crop. So we have one example that is clear success. Now, what Nana is talking about is that we have different resources in different regions and districts. And there are different people in there who, in some areas, they know how to grow tomatoes, for instance. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should assist them with better tomato seeds, with better extension offices, so that these tomatoes, the yield on what they are doing will be higher. Mm -hmm. But tomatoes can go rotten. And therefore, if you don't do something about it, then the benefit will not be there. Mm. So we will put a factory, say, in a tomato growing area. Government will finance it so that it becomes a reality. This will incentivize the women and the men in that area who want to grow tomatoes because they will be paid right away. So that's just not talk. That is the direction that I think the country has to go. Because if we are not creating jobs in the hinterlands of Ghana, and they are all going to move to the few cities and towns, then we are lost people. But if there is a job there, and they see that they can make incomes, and they start becoming taxpayers, then government can use this tax revenue that is now coming to them to give them a clinic, to give them better schools, instead of going to borrow some money to go and give them the schools. You understand? So I think uh, uh, the, 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 the tomato factory you're talking about, Pualungu tomato factory, I've talked about this publicly before. The thinking behind it was correct. The people can grow tomatoes, help them. Don't let the tomatoes go rotten. Mm -hmm. So you put a factory there. But you know what, what happened? 
the skill set that was put to manage the factory was wrong. So here again, it's an issue of starting from A to Z to make sure that you've dotted your I's and cross your T's and make sure everything is together so that the benefit of the program is realized at the end. But if we do halfway, for instance, I gave you the studio example. Yeah. Before the government going to spend $40 million to build one stadium, we gave them a blueprint. Mr. Government, if you're going to do this, the money will become wasted. If after the tournament you don't do ABC, we gave them the blueprint. When they came in, they threw it away. Now, what we didn't want to happen has happened. The, the $40 million is wasted. Another stadium has been built. So we need to change the sense of governance, the, the sensibilities in our governance and the people that we put there so that we don't keep going around in circles. You are not going to have development if you keep borrowing money, waste it, and go and borrow some more. So I think that the one factory, one district policy is something that we must embrace. He's also talked about how he's going to finance it. He says $1 million to every district. To me, it's a bit low. Every constituency. But, yes, every mm -hmm. constituency. Yeah. It's a bit low, but it's a good start. So that we get, and if we scale up and it's working, then we can add more. You know, I would rather go and borrow one billion dollars and give. Uh, uh, we have ten regions, a mm -hmm. hundred million dollars for each region to catalyze agricultural development and to create more factories. You know, because we have livestock, we need to have livestock so that we don't uh, import meat. And, 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 and with livestock, we used to have a corn beef uh, factory. Mm -hmm. That went to waste. We are importing chicken. To me, that's a disgrace. That we should do something about that. Uh, highs and skins. If we want to make boots, shoes, the women who will like all these shoes. If we have a Vara livestock industry, we we'll have highs and we can, we can have a shoe factory mm -hmm. right there and then. I've talked about uh, vegetables, fruit juice. The, if we can this, we can be exporting. The reason why manufacturing is important, and let me spend some time on this. The salaries and wages in Ghana are very low. People go to work eight hours a day, every day, five days a week. At the end of the, of the month, the money that are giving them are not enough. And the reason is because the companies themselves are not doing well. Now, when we get into manufacturing, this is where the economy of scale brings the cost of production down and therefore your margins go up. And because your margins go up, you can afford to pay your workers much better. So what Nana is talking about is something that we must look at and embrace that because if you bring manufacturing of these agricultural products, the raw products, to scale up into f better products, high-value items, pineapple to pineapple juice, orange to orange juice, fruit juice, then, you are, then we can export. We can export to, to Ivory Coast, to Nigeria. If we do it well, we can export to the UK. Now, the, the advantage Ghana has is that our soil right now is so fertile, in some cases we don't, do, we don't need to apply too much fertilizer. And in the U.S., you have shops, people with money, that to go and buy from shops that sell things that have no fertilizer contamination. So these are the opportunities available to us. So the district approach, the regional approach to development is number one. It will curtail into using the, the land that we have, put it to use. It will employ the young people in that area. The, the graduates coming from your university have nothing to do. If there is a factory there, if they, they have the right skill set, they can be employed there. Marketing people will be employed. Even legal experts will come in. Packaging. People who study the arts. Exports. Yeah. So the, the, it cascades into a lot of things that create jobs down the line. And that's how you build a So you, you think, listening to you, you think yeah. that Nana Ekufado will make a better president? Well, um, I think so. And, and, and the reason I'm saying that, I said, you know, President Mahama is also my friend, Nana is my friend, but we are talking as Ghanaian patriotic citizens. What set of policies will get us out of the hole? I agree that infrastructure is important, but it must be done within an economic development blueprint. You cannot focus just on infrastructure. Go and borrow money and do rules and all of that. We need them, but it will get us deeper in the hole. I think that what Nana is talking about has a better chance of us using the God-given resources 
and stopping this mass unemployment and our young people who after they graduate have to try to get out of Ghana to have a better life. We must stop that. And therefore, if we have a development program that cascades on the resources we have and keep the people busy, like we did with cocoa, our economy will grow and I think Ghana will be a better country. Dr. Kofi Amwa, thank you so much for thank talking you. to me this evening. Thank it's been you. such a pleasure. Uh, before I go away, uh, let me just take some questions that I'm getting um, from uh, people on Twitter. I'll quickly just give you about three of those questions. All right. Um, so uh, Jamila Tu uh, says that he, uh, she wants to know uh, from you what you think uh, leaders are lacking. Is it that when they travel, they see things but come back and think that if we are in abject poverty and illiteracy, it works well for them? Well, I don't think they are that cunning. I, I, <laughs> I, think, I, 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 really, I really don't want to think that uh, uh, our leaders... Uh, that's selfish. I think they, they, they may also be just as patriotic as all of us. But I think the important thing is being able to establish the right policy sets to understand how to manage an economy, to appoint the right people. You know, when, when you become president, the constitution gives you a lot of powers. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of important large state institutions. They might be put into capable hands. Because if you don't do that, and we give it to people who say, oh, I just want to make $1 million and then get out of here. Okay. You know, and a lot of that is there. You know, so I think a lot is, is, do people go into politics to really help the people, or they go into politics to help themselves? Okay. Another question here from uh, Janet and Saba. Um, she wants to know if you think free education is actually possible in this country. Well, um, it, 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 education is important, um, and because it's important, if we can make it free, then it's the right direction. But I want to say one little thing about that. When Korea and Taiwan and these people were doing their serious development, they were about 60% illiterate. So my, my position on that is that we must concentrate on building wealth. With the skill set we have, the way we have them now, just like we did when we started the Cocoa Project, the people who haven't been to school are not stupid. They can do something. Mm -hmm. And as we build wealth, then we can deploy some into free education, into infrastructure and all. Okay. But we can have free education when the economy is strong enough. Okay. And the last uh, one is from Ben Echampong, who mm -hmm. says... Uh, President Mahama is considered a unifier, and that is why some Ghanaians will vote for him. What does uh, Dr. Amwa think about the new patriotic party and its problems, and how Nani Kufuadu has not been able to deal with those problems? Well, yes, uh, uh, President Mahama uh, has a good temperament. So does Nani Kufuadu. You have to see, you have to know these people closely. You know, when you know them closely, the public image that some people have about certain people, a lot of times is not the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Nana, Nana is a unifier, um, and, and, and he believes strongly in unifying the country. You know, this, this guy has been around politics all his life, you know, uh, demonstrating in the streets, doing the Rawlings era, he, era. He's been in prison, he's, you know, all kinds of stuff. He's dedicated to help the nation. And I think we should give him a chance to see what he can do. And if you, if you look at his pronouncement in terms of, look at Dr. Baumia, his, his running mate, uh, very erudite, a great economist from Bank of Ghana, did a lot of things there. Um, I, I think uh, uh, Ghana, Ghana needs to change course, uh, not because President, President Mahama is not a good person, but Ghana needs to change course because we need a new set of policies and a new direction. Thank you very much, Dr. Kofi Amwa. Pleasure talking to you thank this you. evening. Thank you. I appreciate it. All the time. All right. So thank you as well for sending in your tweets. I apologize for not reading all of your questions out to Dr. Kofi Amwa. But hopefully we'll have him back after the elections. Have a good night and a good weekend.